to the independent investor channel. Everybody out there wants to own single stock, but uh, nobody wants to incur loss. Uh, in this video, I'm going to jump you into my dividend growth portfolio comprised of 100 stocks. Uh, and I don't lose any sleep over this. I've had this just over two and a half years. It's performed wonderfully. Um, it's made me a ton of money. Um, it's scalable to the masses. This is the best quality companies that I see anywhere in the world to invest in. I use the power of M1 Finance to bring together a collective suite of wonderful companies out there that have been tried and true over the decades to pay and increase their dividends. Uh, this is a dividend growth strategy. Um, this is comprised of only single stock. It is diversified in that there are 100 companies in this portfolio, but I think you'll be uh, most interested in understanding how defensive this is in the face of adversity uh, and volatility in these markets that have uh, really punished a lot of investors for being overexposed in certain segments of the market. Uh, I think you're going to find that this strategy is most conducive to those investors out there that want to take a set it and forget it type of of mentality. I get paid 400 times per year on this portfolio with 400 dividend renderings, four per quarter uh, per holding in this portfolio. It uh, meets a very strict criteria of uh, dividend payers uh, split up across the 11 sectors of the S&P 500. So with that, guys, let's jump in and take a look at the performance of the dividend growth portfolio. So I chronicle two M1 finance portfolios through the independent investor channel. This is the second of those accounts. This was started late in 2019. Um, so the portfolio just about two and a half years old. And um, this is uh, deploying a strategy that I believe wholeheartedly in. And I think a lot of investors can really relate with this strategy. This is the dividend growth strategy. This aims to invest in single stock of those companies that have been uh, proven to pay a dividend. This is uh, uh, chucker blocked full of representatives of the gems of the stock market, the Dow Jones Industrials, some of the large cap dividend aristocrats, uh, kings, and maybe even some achievers on this list of companies that uh, have been um, uh, growing their dividend, uh, have been known to pay a dividend for uh, uh, years past and even decades. In some circumstances, this is a portfolio that performs extremely well in volatile markets. Um, this portfolio I make available to those uh, would-be patrons that email me. Uh, I can send you a link to this direct portfolio. Um, the framework is provided in the description below. It's got 50 holdings, whereas this particular dividend growth portfolio has 100 holdings. I repeat, it has 100 stocks in it. It's done, done quite well. And from a relative perspective, this has um, increased some incredible, produced some incredible market gains, and it's uh, just crept over the $1,000 dividend mark um, in just uh, just a couple of years. So when you talk about building wealth, this is a fabulous way of doing it. And you know, of all the people out there that are trying to beat the market, of all the people out there trying to find that next best thing, that next best needle in a haystack, this is no brainer investing. Um, these companies here, you might not have a lot of wherewithal on. This uh, portfolio is built by me. The hard work has been done. Um, if you want the portfolio, take a look at it. If you wanted to uh, just um, uh, throw away or omit all 100 stocks and pick your own 100 stocks, I think you'd be hard pressed to do so without some level of overlap um, because I've been investing my whole life and these companies um, are the best of breed. They really are. But the structure and framework in this portfolio is is to be noted here. It's performed quite well. It does render almost daily dividends with 100 stocks paying four times a year on an average, which means I get 400 payments per year. Um, you say, Ryan, man, that's amazing. You must work really, really hard at this portfolio to render those 400 payments. I do nothing. And that's the beauty of putting your money to work. You've heard about the concept of putting your money to work to work for you. This is it. And um, this is a wonderful way. And, and some of those dividends are a few bucks. Um, this is not huge with uh, just 33,500 in this account. I've built this up strategically over time. But as the portfolio snowballs and it grows, and those dividends flow into this portfolio, 
it really starts to become a, a, a very sizable and notable investment uh, um, uh, philosophy and approach as the portfolio grows and it really starts to mature and uh, pay larger dividends as the quarters go on and on. And um, it doesn't take long. Um, you guys can probably look at this and perhaps maybe a lot of investors would look at this and say, I, I, I want it now, Ryan. Well, good luck with that. Good luck putting the level of risk on the table to render real results in the stock market. You might be able to do it one or once or twice, but to do it consistently is close to impossible. This eliminates the need to try to time the market. This eliminates the need to try to get lucky in the market. I can say rest assured that investors will set themselves up for the best chance of success into the future by taking on a strategy like I'm displaying to you now with M1 Finance than you'll ever have trying to time the market and try to find that next moonshot stock. It just doesn't happen. And uh, the quicker that would-be investors can get over that and seek out a diversified strategy using dividend growth like I'm just demonstrating to you here, uh, the better off you'll be and the better you'll sleep at night, quite frankly, because um, these companies have been known to uh, produce um, uh, extremely lucrative results for shareholders uh, over the decades that they've existed. These companies have extremely wide moats. Their products that they provide are the best in their respective businesses. And I've worked very hard to construct a portfolio using the framework here in front of you that uh, I openly share. Um, now, I have added real estate into this, uh, so I have uh, rounded this out with all 11 of the sectors in the S&P 500. So think about the, the, the sectors as kind of the construct or the framework of the portfolio and then the individual holdings within each of these sectors uh, will represent the holdings. So a kick in here just a technology to show you what I mean. Technology here just has eight holdings, okay? But these are single stocks. Um, all of these pay a dividend. Um, all of these were the companies that I wanted to put into the technology slice, which uh, is going to have an emphasis on uh, dividends and, of course, be representative in technology. Now, that's just the technology uh, slice. So when we go in here to the holdings itself, you're going to find here with all of the discussion about the volatility in the stock market. I haven't looked at this before I filmed the video. So um, you're going to see uh, what it is I'm working with here. Um, the largest position I have here is $869. And that's with uh, um, the Dow Component Visa. I've got a, three Dow Components here and, and my top three holdings with McDonald's, Amgen, and Visa. Um, so these are best of breed. Then you kind of go down the list here and you can see how if you were to try to pick and choose uh, these, you may get lucky and you may pick, uh, you know, one of these ones here like Broadcom that's up 14%. What, what, what do you do now? You're still not diversified and you're not diversified of the course of holding this to render this 14%. I would rather just take a small amount, render that 13% and, 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 have enough capital to really spread my money out and earn the opportunity to earn um, a really holistic growth over the portfolio by owning more holdings. I don't care if I own one holding in a portfolio that performs at a 10 or 20% clip, or if I own 100 holdings that earn a 10 or 20% clip. The mathematics are such that the renderings are the same. It's just in the latter portfolio I get to enjoy diversification and we can understand that no two stocks are going to perform the same. I mean, I've got some stocks here, wonderful stocks like Cisco. I own 14 shares of it in this portfolio that's off significantly 15 and a half percent. That happens. But if you chose this in a single stock portfolio, well, then those renderings would be down in and of itself 15%. Whereas in this portfolio, I've got buffers in the portfolio from utilities of 15%. These two holdings kind of offset each other, and it's the very definition of the of the, um, the diversified and defensive posture in this that I look to um, to share with you guys. Um, look at this up over 100% here. You might get lucky here. You might invest your entire portfolio into Valero, 
Um, we, we might have a shift in sentiment with oil. We may have policy changes come down the pike, which drives prices back down again. We may have supply and, and, and uh, demand types of initiatives that really flow a lot of uh, supply onto the market which has been indicative just three short years ago. But uh, for the for the short term, I'll take gains like this. Conoco Phillips here, one of my best performers, up 152%. Um, I, I would have never been able to forecast that these companies would have performed or outperformed the market at such a, an amazing clip um, without just putting a, a strategic shot in it, in energy, identifying that these two companies both are best in their respective businesses. Uh, and um, they've done quite well. They've benefited from uh, the sector uh, shift to energy here as gas prices have increased at the pump. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're fine. Home Depot here down off 4%. I don't mind owning it in this portfolio. Uh, Intel down 26%, another name that I just do not mind owning. Uh, as new fundings flow into this account, um, I'll continue to uh, fund these lower uh, held, these ones that are down the most. The funds will come in there and, and will benefit from it. I would have never called this in CVS, never. Up 22.5% here um, over the course of owning this portfolio. Um, D uh, Disney, look at that, down 40%, just incredibly terrible performance in Disney. Disney will have better days. We will look at this at some point in the future and the company will be back in the positive. That I, can, that I can promise you because I'm not panicking out of this. If I had put my entire portfolio into Disney at the time that Disney Plus came out and everybody was so bullish on it, I would be down 40% of my dollars. And for new investors, you can really sit back and say, wow, this, this is interesting the way that Ryan buffers the portfolio. He's able to gain some appreciation in some of those areas of the market and he doesn't allow a lot of leaks in the portfolio or areas uh, where profits can avoid uh, benefiting me. Now this is during volatile markets guys. The, the markets have really sold off and you'll, you'll find that a lot of these good quality companies here it's just going to take time uh, to come back and, and really uh, complement this bottom line. I think in conducive markets I'm going to be doing a review on, on these portfolios and, and sharing a different story here. We'll look at Lend. They're up 14%. Great. Uh, Toronto Dominion, the uh, uh, um, Canadian banks here. I've got a good spackling. The Canadian banks in here. Pepsi, of course, just old Ironside doing great um, here. There's Murderer's Row here. Starbucks. Everybody was bullish on Starbucks. And I am too. But even good companies go through phases of consolidation. And Starbucks is going through that right right now. And the further it goes down, the more of a buy it is. And the more I can rely on the technology with M1 Finance to continue to accumulate shares uh, for me on these companies. So I'm going to try to cruise through here, just give you an indication. Some are red, some are green. That is part of investing. I'm one of those investors that come on and I will uh, suggest to expect this type of uh, performance if you're going to put your dollars to risk in the stock market um, sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down and over the long term we're hoping for you know a rate of return that uh, is going to allow us to grow wealth over the portfolio as a whole um, this is how you invest uh, this is great one of my new holdings here with cold storage uh, a real estate REIT uh, what the uh, largest actually in the world for uh, cold storage um, critical uh, piece of our um, uh, trade and business that is set, uh, very necessary in our shipping and logistics chain. ExxonMobil here up nicely. So as we cruise toward the bottom here, you can kind of see how, you know, the offset of some of the performing sectors has done quite well. Uh, and then to augment some of those areas of the portfolio. Look at that. I got Murderer's Row here at the bottom. <laughs> uh, in financials really that have uh, really rolled off here uh, as of late in volatile markets. But that gives you a nice indication of how the portfolio has performed even in volatile markets. Um, here off 20% in the markets we're holding in there. Anybody out there can have the tolerance to understand the um, how the portfolio uh, even performs in good markets and what to expect uh, in poor markets. Again, the portfolio is provided for you guys in the description below. Um, the independent investor channel is affiliated with M1 Finance. That means I can receive a small compensation for, for providing information and tutorials like this where I take you in and I show you this is my specific account. This is very, very real. 
um, and I, I can provide you uh, an introduction to M1 Finance and the aesthetics that exist therein and what you can expect for yourself as we look to duplicate and scale efforts on how to enter into the stock market using the dividend growth strategy, diversification, and passive investing to your benefit to gain wealth for you. So with that, guys, we'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the dividend growth portfolio. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this is a, a cool way of investing. I don't see uh, really a lot of people investing this way, which is ironic because uh, this way of investing is a way of investing that everyone can participate in. Everyone. Doesn't matter what your experience level is. Hell, I've already done the work for you. The portfolio is completed. If you don't like any of my holdings, you can get rid of all of them. Use the framework. Put whatever 100 stocks you want in there or 50, or 25, or whatever suits your investing need. But I think the importance of understanding that there is no cost to this way of investing, this portfolio costs zero uh, in maintenance fees. It requires zero management over the portfolio. I've owned this for two and a half years. I've done very, very little to it, if anything, except for allow my money to work for itself. And you hear all the time about the importance of setting your money up to work for you I've just provided you a tutorial on doing just that. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Subscribe to The Mess if you enjoy uh, basic uh, investing 101 types of philosophies like I roll out on the channel. My message is applicable to the masses. I'm not looking to cater to one uh, specific group or the other. If you want to make money in the stock market, uh, come to the Independent Investor Channel. Uh, everything else is uncivilized. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this M1 Dividend Growth Portfolio Tutorial, and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.